Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial we've got something really exciting to explore together, an advanced custom visual for Power BI called Date Picker. Now we all know how crucial the date analysis is in Power BI reporting. It forms the backbone of our data driven decisions and that's where the Date Picker steps in to make our lives easier and more efficient. Now before we dive in, make sure that you've subscribed to my channel so that you never miss out on any of the valuable Power BI tips and tricks and also don't forget to hit that like button if you find this video helpful. Alright, so let's jump in and discover how the date picker visual can revolutionize the way you handle date filtering and analysis in your Power BI reports. So without further ado, let's get started with this tutorial. So first of all, let me show you how to add this particular visual to your Power BI report. So from this particular drop down over here, I'm going to scroll down and select get more visuals. So this will take you to the app source visual section where you find all of the custom visuals. So let's search for the visual over here. I'm going to type in date picker and this is the visual that I'm talking about from Truvis. I'm going to select this and then let's click on add over here. So you'll see that the visual is getting imported into your Power BI report and once it is imported you'll get a message saying that import is successful. I'm going to click on OK and now you see that our date picker visual has been imported into our Power BI report and I can simply click on this to bring the visual into our report view. And now let me bring in the date from my calendar table into the date picker visual over here. So you have date option over here and once you bring in the date you will see this particular dialog box over here which basically helps you set up the date picker. So on the first screen there are two picker types option to choose from. One is the range where you can manually choose the date range that you want to filter down to and there's also start and end where you get to choose your start date and end date. For now let's select range and click on next. The next option here is to choose whether you want the single month view or do you want the double month view. So I'm going to click on next with single view over here. And then the next option is to choose the canvas type, whether you want a pop-up style or a canvas type. We'll look at it in detail a little bit later. For now, I'm just going to select canvas and then click on next. And then there are some options here to choose from whether you want the light theme or your dark theme. Or you can also have a custom theme over here where you can import your JSON theme file to change the colors and the background formatting, etc. I'm going to leave it at blue for now and then click on done. So let me just help you understand what are the different features that are available in this visual. On the top left over here, you see a toggle which says date range. If I turn this off and now I can just select the individual dates on my calendar. Let's say for example, your requirement is to take a look at the sales for the last two Saturdays. I can simply select last two Saturdays and click on apply and my table over here gets filtered to show the data for the last two Saturdays. And if I come back over here, let me toggle the date range on and now I will be able to choose the date range that I want to look at. For example, if I want to choose 1st to 11th, I can simply click on apply and I have all my sales listed here from 1st to 11th. There are some presets that are available here on the left side. For example, if I select yesterday and click on apply, I have my yesterday sales appearing over here. Likewise, I have this week, I have last week, I have this month, etc. And then there are two more options over here. For example, there is days up to today. Let's say, for example, you want to take a look at the last 365 days sales. I can simply type in 365 over here and click on apply. I get to see the sales here for the last 365 days. Likewise, there's another option here which says days starting today. I can type in, let's say, for example, 10 and this will go 10 days ahead from my today's date. So this is the layout and functions that you see when you click on the date option over here but wait till you see the plethora of functions that are available when you click on the advanced settings. So there are a whole host of features and functions that are available here for you to play around with to suit your needs and requirements. So let's start from the first over here. First section over here is the calendar which will let you choose whether you want a canvas style or a pop-up style. So let's look at the pop-up style and click on apply. So when I go back to my report, when I click on this, you see there's a little pop-up calendar that appears and then you can cancel and that particular calendar disappears. It is different from the canvas one that we saw earlier. So 
you can switch it back to canvas because that's what I like. And then there are two different checkboxes for you to play around with. First one is keep canvas display all the time. And then there is hide date picker on the mouse out. So when I click on this and click on apply, let's go back to the report. So when I click on the date button over here, I have the calendar visual available to me. But when I move the cursor away, you see that the date picker is hidden automatically. And if you want to turn that off, you can simply go back to advanced settings under hide date picker, just uncheck this box and that will be keep canvas display all the time and there's also different date picker type we initially saw this when we were setting up the visual we have range and then we have start and end there's also a selection style like square ellipse circle etc and then there's auto scale calendar you can simply click on apply and now when i go back i have my start date where i can choose from for example if i want from november 1st and the end date until let's say second first of december i can do that just by clicking and applying over here now let's go back to advanced settings and let's take a look at the second option which is formatting. This particular visual emphasizes a lot on the formatting options like you can customize a lot of things over here from your font size to your font family, the text color, the background etc. So first is you have your font family, you can change the font family here. You have your font size, you can change the color of the text, you can simply click on the text button over here and choose the color that you want. And then you get an option to choose the calendar background over here and you can change the font color of your selected dates and then you can also change the background of those selected dates there's an enable border button over here you can also get to choose the width of the border and now let's take a look at the date picker button over here so the label which appears on your left button which is your start date and end date for example i have start date label and end date label over here you get an option to customize that and you can change this to whatever you want based on your requirement. You can change the width and the height of that particular button. You can change the background, border, font, etc. So there are a lot of other options that are available here for you to play around with. Let's head to the next interesting section, which is the default selection. Now, one of the requirements that people come up with very often is to have the ability to be able to filter your data to today or yesterday or this week or this month by default and also have that ability so that the user can choose the custom dates. Now to do that in a built-in slicer, it is difficult and there is a workaround however, but it is not very straightforward. And this visual addresses that particular problem without you having to look for a workaround. So let's take a look at a couple of options over here. Let's take a look at this week and click on apply. So this becomes my default selection. So when I go back over here, my default selection is 10th of December to 16th of December, which is this week. And when you open this report the next week, you'll automatically see the data filtered to 17th of December till 23rd of December. Now, just like this week, we saw there are other options over here. Of course, not everything can be incorporated within the built-in options. That is why you have a function here called as based on feed. Now, this lets you customize completely based on your requirement. Now, let's say your requirement is to take a look at the last 15 days of data whenever you open the report. Now, how do you do that? We don't have that default option available over here. This is where the based on field option comes into play, where you will have to create a very simple measure. So what does that measure look like? So let's see what we can do. So I'm going to create a new measure over here. I'm going to call this as 15 days default selection is equals to I'm going to use the switch statement over here and say true followed by a comma and then I'm going to say selected value I'm going to pass in the date from my calendar table close the bracket here and then I'm going to say is greater than equals to today minus 15 then I want this to return one else I want to return a zero. So the based on field function works based on the Boolean value one and zero. So what I'm doing over here is I'm saying if it, if the date is today minus 15, then return one else zero. And then I'm going to click on confirm. And now that I have my measure created, I'm going to bring this into my default selection over here. You can add multiple default selection. For example, let's say if you want 20 days, 30 days, 365 days, you can do that. And now that I have my measure added, I'm gonna go back into my section based on field over here, selected. And on the field, I have the option to choose, which is 15 days default selection. I'm gonna click on 
apply over here and you see that I, my last 15 days have been applied automatically. And then the next section here is the date selector wherein you get to make some formatting changes here related to the font, text, background, date format, etc. You can choose between MMDDYY or DDMMYY over here. Now let's take a look at the next section which is presets. So this is where you'll be able to enable or disable the presets. So for now the presets are turned on. If I turn them off and click on apply, you see that we are no longer seeing the presets that we had over here which showed today, yesterday, this month, etc. So if I go back to my advanced settings over here, go to presets and turn them on and apply, you will see those settings available again over here for you to choose from. So let's go back over here into the preset section. So you'll be able to choose the preset position whether you want on the left or the right side of the date picker. You can choose the text size, the font family, styling, etc. The hover text, the hover background, etc. And then this is where you'll be able to choose the default presets that are available to you. So we have today, yesterday, min date, all these selected right now. So let me uncheck min date this week, this month, and I want to bring in a preset that I created. For example, I want to have the preset of the last 15 days. So let me bring in the 15 days default selection into my presets area over here. And now you see that we will have a preset option here. I can give it a preset name. I'm just gonna call this as last 15 days. And from the preset field, I'm gonna select the 15 days default selection and click on save preset. And let me scroll down, I have the 15 days preset now available. I can simply click on apply and you see that I have that option over here. So I can now simply click last week. I have my last week selected. Last 15 days, I have my last 15 days selected now. So these were the presets options that are available for you to play around. You also have last quarter, max quarter, QTD, YTD, etc. The next section here is the selection controls, whether you want to have the selection controls, which is apply clear on the top or at the bottom. You also have an option to choose the font size of the apply button, the background color, etc. Clear button, the go to today button, etc. I can click on apply and you see that they shift towards the bottom of that particular visual. And then there is something called weekend and holidays where you can highlight your weekends and holidays. So if I turn them on and then we can change the color of the weekdays or the weekends, you can change the font family, you can have the markers here. You can also choose the shape from here and the size of the shape and also the color. And likewise, you have for holidays as well. For holidays, you will have to create a measure like we created earlier with the Boolean value to be able to identify which particular day is a holiday. For example, if I have to just create a quick measure over here, what I will do is I'm gonna call this as holiday is equals to, I'm gonna quickly use the switch statement over here, true, and then say selected value of my date from my calendar table is equals to, I'm gonna pass in my date over here. Let's say I wanna highlight 1st of December here. So I'm gonna pass in 1st of December. If my date is 1st of December, then return one, else return zero. I'm gonna close the bracket here and confirm. And then this measure, I'm gonna bring in into my holidays section here. And when I turn this holidays on over here, I can turn off the marker here and choose the shape from different options that are available over here. Now I can simply click on apply and let me apply again and go back to the report over here. And when I select or open up the calendar over here for the 1st of December, you will see that we are displaying that particular icon. Now let's make some changes to that icon because it is barely visible. So let me go back to holidays over here. I want to change the color here of this to, uh, let's say uh, this blue color over here. And I also want to increase the size to let's say about seven and then click on apply. Let me go back to the report over here to 1st of December. You see that it is high now highlighted in blue and with a little bigger size. And there you have it folks. I hope you enjoyed exploring its features as much as I did. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any questions or if there's a specific Power BI topic that you would like me to cover in future videos, drop a comment below and let me know and I'll be happy to help you. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time. Click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you never miss out on any of the latest Power BI videos. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning.